You're sure you know what you're doing? Of course I'm sure. I've done this at least three times. Only three? Calm down, Carl. I can't aim straight when you're anxious. Do you really need to practice on me? What else am I going to shoot at? The void? Now hold still. Actually, I've been meaning to ask you about that. Oh shit, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> See? Everything's okay. It's okay. I, I do need to practice with the crossbow, though. Before we begin, I'd like to give a shout out to all of you. The channel has literally gained 50% more subscribers with the last video alone, which hurts my brain to think about. So please, thank all your grandmothers, dogs, inanimate objects, and whoever else for subscribing to the channel for me. It's really helped out and I can't wait to see where we go from here. Also, don't forget to stick around till the end of the video to learn what new suffering I'll be tackling in the next one. Hooray! So, ranged combat. Most gentlemanly of warfare. Actually, I'm pretty sure the whole point of ranged combat is to kill your opponent before they even know you're there, but that's besides the point. Thanks to Wilhelm and Brendan for suggesting today's run. Sorry if I butchered that, I've never been able to pronounce Brendan. Can you beat Sultan Sanctuary with bows and crossbows? Before we begin, it should be pointed out that Sultan Sanctuary has three ranged weapon types. Bows, crossbows, and pistols. Pistols are by far my favorite, due to the fact that they have a whole slew of hidden mechanics and ways to make them obliterate everything in their path. And for that reason, we don't get to use them. On the other side of the coin, bows and crossbows are notorious for being underwhelming at best. Most of the community dismisses them, assigning them the role of drawing out single enemies for aggro and moving on without a second glance. So with that in mind, let's see if we can change a few opinions. Let's go over the rules. First, we can only use bows or crossbow type weapons. Simple enough. Second, any and all equipment, that being armors, charms, and rings, is allowed. And third, no cheating or exploits. This is a pretty straightforward run, so I see no reason why it couldn't be done naturally. Time for the build. First things first, we're going to start as the hunter. It's not entirely necessary, but between the extra point in decks and the free crossbow and bolts, I see no reason to pick any other class. As far as creeds go, we're going to start with the three, due to them selling different types of arrows, and eventually end up with the House of Splendor for their wine and the vast supply of arrows and buffs. Moving on to specifics, let's look at our weapon choices. We've got quite a bit to choose from here, but in reality, the choices are pretty slim. Looking through the crossbows, we see that there's very little range and maximum possible damage, which is odd considering how difficult it would be to collect some of these. Not only that, but the actual rate of fire on these is pretty bad. We'd never hurt for stamina, but I want the option of being able to make my enemies into a pincushion at a moment's notice. So, throwing those out, that leaves us with bows. Let's see what we have. Honestly, it's not much better. The range of damage is a bit more defined, so that's good. The routes and materials I would need to use to get most of these really isn't worth the few extra points of damage. I'd love to use the Gravewalker bow, but I'd be unable to use it until the very end of the game and I'd have to max out two stats. That's simply not going to work. With all that in mind, we're going to go for the Aegis Great Bow. It can be gotten just after defeating the Worm, doesn't cost much in the ways of transmutation, it upgrades with easy to find materials, and has one of the higher damages available to us. The Perfect Storm. Moving along, we can skip over charms. It doesn't matter if we're using bows or crossbows, you can't attach a charm to either. Bummer. As far as armor goes, there's not much to say. I'll be grabbing the Tarnished Coronet for a little extra damage, but nothing else really applies, so Fashion Salt is very much encouraged. Rings are pretty simple as well. We'll grab the usual fanfare as we go, but in the end I think we'll be sporting the Grasping Ring, Mossy Ring, Trickster's Band, and Wrapped Link for nice little bonuses they offer. The only thing to keep in mind will be which type of ammo we choose. For bows, we've got regular, flame, and poison arrows. Each one is pretty situational, so I'll likely be grabbing as much of each as I can, when I can, and swapping between them as needed. And that's it! The rest of the challenge will likely hinge on the actual mechanics of the bow, which I'm sad to say I'm pretty unfamiliar with. Guess we'll see what happens. Starting off, we have to make our character. I couldn't think of any bow and arrow puns, so I just went with Steve. Because I'm boring like that. <laughs> no? Not even you, drum kit guy? Okay, I'm leaving. After a quick test to see if there was even a chance, we let the unspeakable deep end our suffering and begin our journey. We join the three, pop our sanctuary, and then skip through the festering banquet. After breaking our ankles, we collect the self bow and loop back to our first test, the sodden knight. So we've got a couple of problems right from the get-go. First, our damage type is kind of weird. With a bow, we do 80% slash damage and 20% blunt. Crossbows are 90-10 split as well, so neither weapon is working towards its weaknesses. Not only that, but my aim is terrible. Look at this. Was I drunk? I might have been drunk. It's a close call, but eventually we knock him out. I'd probably recommend selling all the items around the banquet to a merchant for some extra ammunition and leeway, but you do you, boo-boo. After running completely out of arrows, I do just that. 
selling as much as I can and using my winnings to get more ammo. I can tell already that this is going to be a continuous problem for the beginning of the game. Money is going to be tight, and dying at this point might ruin the run, so we'll have to play carefully. Considering one of my main issues is my atrocious aim, I give mouse and keyboard a quick try, and while I'm not a fan of how clunky it feels to move my character, the point and click accuracy is really nice. Unfortunately, I'm too unfamiliar with the key bindings, so back to being a console peasant I go. Guess I'll just have to improve my aim. After upgrading my bow to plus two, we go after the queen. Our natural damage output is terrible, but buffs are apparently really good on the bow. Once we have some actual money, we'll have to invest in those as well. Moving on to the alchemist. He's actually pretty hard. I'm not doing enough damage to mitigate his second phase, and because of that I get cornered pretty fast. The hell was that? On my second attempt, it went better. I used a buff this time around to boost my damage, and that made the difference. We're running low on those though, and I'm starting to run out of arrows as well. Losing to a boss really hurts my wallet and my quiver. We need to avoid doing that again. Thankfully, that's not the case with the Cyclops. One attempt. Flawless victory. At this point, it looks like as long as I have a larger arena to run around in, we'll be able to win with ease. I hope. Before we press on, I level up a bit and buy some arrows. A lot of arrows. The Pulse Jester isn't bad. It's a bit harder to hit him since he's basically my height and sprints after us no matter how far we run, but we're doing a good amount of damage still, so it's not too bad. Before we press on, I make sure to stop and visit the Nomad for my crown. Steed, the goddess. Time for the worm. He's really not that bad. For once, we want him to keep flying. He's much easier to hit when he's floating around, and with our bow, we're able to keep up our DPS throughout the entire fight. That's a nice change of pace. I make sure to run down to the House of Splendor, trade in some bat wings, and get some golden wine. And while I'm in the area, now is probably the best time to grind out our Aegis Great Bow. Not only is the dome a great area for grinding salt and gold, which can only help our build, but this will be the best time to upgrade our bow from a transmutation standpoint. Our self bow is sitting at plus three, which means when we transmute it, it'll go back down to plus two. However, because we've been collecting all the free upgrades around the map, we have enough to boost it right back to plus four with no issues. No fuss, no muss. Hopefully this bow is worth the trouble. We skip along to the Tree of Men, which goes surprisingly well. Once again, our range is really helping us out. We can abuse his animation loop for the first half without any real issues, and we can even keep our DPS going throughout the entire fight for the second and third phases. Between our Golden Wine and buff, he doesn't put up much resistance. Hey Tony, you seen this new bow I got? Oh yeah, that's a good looking bow. Yeah, sure is. Hey, check this out. Ah shit, scram! The husk is a piece of cake. All you have to do is stay away from him, roll under his gunfire, and ah, crap. Well, stamina is still a problem. My instinct is to just spray and pray, but that's clearly not the right mindset to have. The second time around, I'm more careful and- Get out of here, Tony! There, that's better. And yes, before someone comments, both skeletons are named Tony. They're all Tony. Anywho, onto the stench. It's not very difficult, just- God damn it, Tony! Get out of here! <laughs> it goes down. The minions are annoying, since they're blocking all my arrows, but it's nothing too difficult. On to the Inquisitor. He falls apart like wet paper. Our dex is almost maxed out at this point, and with our new fire arrows and the combination of our two buffs, this build is really coming together. Also, it was about this point in the run where the bow started to feel a bit more natural to use. Even when I'm surrounded by enemies, I feel like a badass. I love doing these easier runs in between the more challenging ones, it keeps me itching for more. The third lamb goes down without much issue. He's too slow to actually be much of a threat, so long as you hug the edges of the arena. The Dried King, however, is more of a challenge. His arena is tight, and he feels more aggressive to me since I can't stunlock him consistently. It's weird how hard he is for most of these challenge runs, he's not that hard of a boss if you use blunt weapons, but we never seem to have access to those. Karstraw is Karstraw, nothing to see here. After upgrading to plus six, I attempt the Prince. It's not even a fight. The arena is so massive and his hitbox is so large that I can hug the right hand side and just fire nonchalantly into the air, and still hit him. He's too slow moving to lumber over here, and whenever he tries to belly flop his way downtown, I just hit him with an arrow and push him back again. So yeah, for anyone struggling with this boss, you've got a new strategy. You're welcome. I upgrade my bow to plus seven, then finish off Cran before moving on. He's a bit challenging, considering I have nowhere to run and he's aggressive AF this time around. Still, so long as you know his moves, you'll be okay. Might as well finish off Maul as well. She's actually pretty difficult. Usually her Skyfall attack is easier to dodge, but because I'm trying to stay away from her, it locks onto me in such a way that I have to move closer to her, giving her even more chances to hit me. It's close, but we get there. Now we're really cruising. Coveted is a little beefy, considering how resistant he is to slashing damage, but with patience and good roll timing, it's no issue. Following that is the Witch, who's actually a challenge, mainly due to my current mindset. 
I've been training myself to get as far away from bosses as I can. The witch has a machine gun. That's bad math. The better way to do it is to hug her to death. After we make that mental switch, it goes fine. The unskinned and architect are nothing to worry about. Their arena is so large that I can pepper them to death at range with minimal pinballing. The same goes for the three. The judge and the king fall fast, but the knight decided he wasn't ready for a relationship yet. Hey, I'm here for you. You can let your guard down with me. It's alright, I would never hurt you. Emotionally. Skurs has the same problem as the other guys. He's too slow to catch me, and his arena is big enough that I can pester him from afar. He's just a big dumb lizard. <laughs> Lastly, we have the Nameless God. He's got some resistance, but weirdly not as much as I would have expected. Playing keep away can be a little difficult, but with good timing, knowledge of his moves, and a little greed, he goes down. And that's it. That wasn't so bad. Can you beat Sultan Sanctuary with only bows and crossbows? Sure can. Some might suggest that using a crossbow for future runs would make it harder, but I don't think that's actually the case. Longer, yes, but harder, no. I think the crossbows do more damage, just at a slower pace, so the only real change between the two runs would be making sure that you time your shots a bit more. If you all had any interest in that, we can certainly give it a go. I'll just have to convince Carl to help me practice again. Isn't that right, Carl? Carl? Eh, I'm sure he's game for it. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. As always, if you've got some extra kindness in your heart today, it would really help me out if you could like the video. Clearly, doing that is really spreading the channel, considering we just gained a whopping 50 plus subscribers with the last one. Again, to everyone who's joined our little community here, I really appreciate you. I hope you're having a good time. If you aren't subscribed, please consider doing so. I upload a new video about every other week, and we've been pretty consistent with that lately, so you know you've got something to look forward to if you do. Feel free to leave a comment down below, where you can let me know how I'm doing, and also make suggestions for future challenge runs. Your crazy ideas are what keep me in love with this game, so please, let them rip. Also, you can follow me on Twitter, where I generally just post updates on the videos and little sneak peeks to keep you hungry. I'm also pretty active on the Salt and Sanctuary subreddit, so feel free to hit me up in that general location, and you can also find me on Discord. Link's in the description. And if you're struggling with the Salt and Sanctuary playthrough yourself, feel free to use my completely self-made wiki. It has everything you need, including stats, item maps, build testers, PDF books of all the lore, and a lot more. Every week I add a little bit more information to it. I'd say it should be completed by the time January rolls around. Fingers crossed. For our next video, I think it's time we gave a consumable only run a try. Nothing like fighting the economy while fighting for your own life as well, am I right? Also, just a heads up, I've been playing another game in my spare bits of free time on the side, and I've actually made a new challenge run out of that one as well. I have a feeling that the editing for that video is going to take a back seat, so no more information on that for now, but keep your eyes peeled for future hints about what I'm up to. And that's it. I hope you all had a good holiday, or just a good week if you aren't celebrating this year. We're almost there, ladies and gentlemen. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you on the next one.